And we're good to go. All right, everyone. Welcome to the Aero Robotics Community Workgroup meeting of April 10, 2024. Today we have a developer meeting. So I am um, joined by Kimberly McGuire, who's leading the screen and taking minutes and keeping us on time. And my name is Ramon Roche, General Manager for Tronco Foundation. And it's been a while since I lead the call. So please help me out here. I don't know how this works. So I'm going to try to do the best here. We set up an agenda that is uh, sort of standardized across all the developer meetings. Um, again, this is something that we can together uh, figure out. So we got any announcements. Um, we have some, oh, actually, we didn't update the agenda, but just pretend I'm going to pretend there is some other text here. So announcements, committee, subcommittee updates subcommittee discussions for what's next. And then, um, what is it? Uh, discussion, open-ended discussion at the, at the end, and then a uh, quick intro or for the next presentation that's happening on April 23rd. Um, that's all the way to the end. So why don't we get started with any announcements that we might have? So before I actually, we started the call, I put in a message on Discord asking for subcommittee updates and I tried to figure out if there was any announcements. It didn't seem like there were any announcements worth putting in here. I still wanted to leave the slide in case anyone on the call here wanted to make any announcements. Does anyone here have anything that we don't know about yet? All right, I guess that's I guess that's a no. Uh, maybe I can uh, say something to you. Can uh, is the mic is fixed right now or not yet? Uh, it's still not great. I don't know not about your best. phone. Yeah, ah, I hope you can add it to the chat. Sure. Um, it's good. Now better a little bit. It sounds, it sounds like your game's turned out. So maybe that's not really bad. So I sent you an email uh, on one of the, one of the things that uh, uh, made me join this uh, work group is uh, some of our work in uh, uh, the, the, the new way of designing uh, the flight controllers. If you recall it, I sent you an email and I think Ramon is included in it. Oh, it's uh, it's about the oh. platform that you're making. Um, yeah. Could you send it like a text in the chat because you're still very difficult to hear for us. So we don't know exactly what's wrong, but if you if you put it in the chat, we can uh, we can announce yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Meanwhile, yeah. meanwhile, let's give um, time to Rick, who's got his hand up. Um, Rick. Yes. Yep. Hi. Um, so uh, for the outdoor planning, I mean, I, I, I think there's um, the, the, the main thing that uh, kind of can probably add is on the RG pilot side, we have a PR for handling the um, off board path guidance. Um, so that's um, that's been submitted and um, and the feedback has been pretty good um but what we need to do is a, a lot of testing so um so before that will get merged in um the RG pilot core dev team would like a, a lot of testing for all the dubbins path panning and everything so there's quite a lot of work to do there to put that into RG pilots auto test so um we've made a little blog uh, in our dev area so people can have a go at it. Um, but before it gets merged into core RG Pilot um, code, the, there's substantial amount of testing as expected. So that's going to take quite a while. So um, probably not going to be much from me until new stuff until all that's in place. Um, they'd be quite good to have. And it's not the non-linear path guidance planner. It's just a modification of the standard L1 controller. Um, but uh, using velocity and acceleration set points, which is a new thing for plane. Um, and the testing requirements on RG Pilot are fairly, fairly um, substantial. So th there's a lot of work. Uh, anyone who wants to help 
put that in place are uh, very welcome to help but uh, i expect it's probably just going to be us to 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 tick away at until until that's done um yeah so that's that's kind of an, an update from me on that side thank you um kim do you want to put this on the updates for the subcommittees uh sure uh oh so it's actually for it's actually not an announcement it's for the outdoor uh oh uh maybe it's an update sorry wrong it yeah we don't really need testers we need people to write the tests or the tests need <laughs> to be written so um it, when it's when it's running it'll be automatically tested um but without the auto tests it doesn't go in that's the that's the rule all right can you share perhaps the PR in the chat so that we can uh, add that to the, or the blog or the, the thing that we can refer people to? Anyway, um, I've moved the, uh, it from announcements to the outer planning now. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Okay, so let's uh, take it from the top. Um, so this is uh, subcommittee updates, and um, we already went ahead and asked in Discord if there were any updates uh, for each of these, and I um, just want to go through the um, messages you sent. So in their navigation, um, the message is that we are working on uh, GitHub issue 60 from Bonolo. And that is this one. Um, that's I'm not gonna go in depth into each one of the updates yet. We can we can do that later. I just wanted to give you a quick update what's happening. So they're reviewing existing indoor and navigation ROS packages. That's what's happening on indoor navigation. Um, is there any other update that you'd like to put into the minute minutes today, uh, folks from the indoor navigation group? Um, nothing else. All right, thank you. Okay, so let's go on to simulation. Simulation land. All right, so for simulation, um, the message was that they're still figuring out the scope of simulation subcommittee. And uh, there was a landscape initial draft. So landscape, for those of you who don't know, is basically uh, where we're keeping track of things. Um, do you have a tab for with the landscape open? Uh, one moment. I will have one soon. Uh, I will. I'll open it up at the simulation. Um... Okay, and then maybe just add a link in there. There you go. So, is there any out the any other updates uh, from simulation? Any questions? Anything? From the simulation folks? No. Um, th there's been a little bit of discussion on Discord, um, but uh, nothing nothing uh, in progress at the moment. Um, apart from kind of updating the the GitHub pages. Which, yeah, um, that's great work, by the way. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. One of the things I'd like to do, I think the, the simulation architecture um, with regards to using either PX4 and Gazebo um, or autopilot and Gazebo is, is quite complex. Um, and it's not really documented anymore, anywhere that I've seen how, how things fit together. Um, so one of the things I'd like to lead up uh, before, you know, over the next uh, month or two is creating some really nice architecture diagrams for how the simulations are currently put together. Um, so yeah, that's just something that I'd, I'd like to work on. I think it'd benefit the community a lot just to show, like in the Ardor Pilot Wiki, the simulation diagram is like eight years old or something. It's 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 very, very out of date. Um, so just showing like where, where the FDM runs and how things communicate and what the transports are, um, just for the, you know, for the major simulation sort of packages that people tend to use. Um, and I, I think we can expand the list, but I'd like to just start with how PX4 works with Gazebo and then how our compiler works with Gazebo, because there are some differences. And I think it's important to, to recognize how things are different. Also, one thing I noticed, like I am recently working with uh, new Gazebo. Uh, so it's not quite well documented 
to use with ROS2. Um, so maybe that can also be included in this one. Like also, I'm I'm specifically working with uh, drone simulation right now that we have uh, a couple of drones here in the lab. Uh, so maybe I can keep track of things that I do and then put everything in one place and uh, we can carry on from there. I'm I'm having a hard time um, hearing Arsh. Um, uh -huh. Did you capture that, Kim? Uh, a little bit. Like uh, you, you were saying that um, it's not very clear, like how to start from ROS2 and simulation ge generic. But it's you're not talking about like you know in what sense like which simulator to use, right? It's not clear to use either Gazebo Classic or Gazebo Ignition or. So I tried uh, Gazebo Classic, uh, but it's going to be uh, out of support in next year. So I thought maybe it's better to use the new Gazebo. Uh, so I started with the Gazebo that comes uh, in box with the Rust to Humble. Uh, I forgot the version name. Ignition, so, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Ignition. So in that, if I try to develop some plugin, it will be all within the IGN and IGN, uh, I think IGN namespace. But when it's come, when it comes to the new Gazebo, it's uh, under the DZ sim. So it's it's like it's a bit complex uh, in the documentation as well of the Gazebo. All right. Yeah, um, Mayank, I think there's um, th there's quite good documentation for the Ross GZ bridge, I think. So uh, there's probably two separate things is that Gazebo doesn't have any real dependency on Ross, and that's quite okay. deliberate. Um, yeah. So it has, um, has quite a few plugins to support UAVs. I mean, uh, um, we kind of outlined them in the talk the other week. Um, and there is a bridge between ROS2 and, and Gazebo, um, but the, the two systems use very different transport mechanisms. Um, so that there's really, um, where they did get a bit stuck is that the Ubuntu 22 and current Humble release is tied to ROS Ignition, um, and, and we don't want to use that. And both, uh, I think, Ben um, on the sort of on the, the PX4 side, and kind of I on the on the RG pilot side, we 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 ran with Gazebo Garden, and the reason for that is that those namespace changes that um, the Gazebo team made are so pervasive that um, supporting anything in the old Ignition format is really difficult. Um, so we just jumped ahead. They do have binary support for both um, Garden and Harmonic. And it is documented, but you do have to dig around inside the um, inside the gazebo um, documentation. So it, it is there is a lot there, um, but it's not as easy to find as the the old page that gazebo classic had, where you, you could just um, th there was like a like a series of billboards that you could just go to for running tutorials and things. There's no equivalent to that. It's all kind of down in the individual packet. Uh, package libraries um, where, where there's more detail about how things are put together um, or in the examples where there's uh, the example worlds. If you want to look at drone simulations, I'd recommend there's two that or uh, well, three that have been provided by um, the Gazebo team. Um, one is for the, um, I think it's uh, uh, MBZIRC or something like that. There was a Basically, uh, like a, in the, one of the Gulf states, hosted a, a drone simulation competition. So there's that one, um, and then there is the um, vehicle gateway, uh, which is worth having a look at. Um, and then, not specific to sort of um, aerial vehicles, but the VRX project has a lot of documentation, and that all uses the new gazebo. So that they they are um, tool sets that are maintained by OSRF and and associated groups. Um, and then PX4 and RG Pilot has stuff as well. So th there's there's a lot there, but I guess what's missing is something that pulls it all together. Could you mention the first project because I uh, missed that? Uh, it's I think it's I can't remember the name of it. It's, it's, it's um, MBZIRC, I think something like that. Um, I, I I can look it up. Oh, okay, a, yeah, that's uh, as long as uh, perhaps uh, give an update indeed uh, for that. Yeah. 
yeah but it, th th those aerial projects are not maintained so they're, they're kind of snapshots of how things worked maybe a couple of years ago um but they yeah. do use they do use um gazebo garden but i'd say px4 and rgpilot are probably yeah. most current in terms of using aerial vehicles with gazebo and ross so both of them have um examples where the whole system is is combined yeah so for now like i'm following the Agile pilot uh, report, report for Gazebo uh, DZ uh, for an example. So maybe if I want to build some plugin, I will look onto the Agile pilot repo instead of going to the Gazebo thing. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there are lots of example plugins, mm -hmm. um, in, in, but you need to you need to find the source code. Uh, yeah. I think it won't be in the um, there won't be a tutorial. I don't think for how to how to do that so much. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, we got to continue with the subcommittee updates. Is there anything else that, uh, from simulation before we move on? No, that's it for simulation. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Riz. Okay. Uh, next up, we got outdoor planning. And Yep. Yeah, I can provide the update. Thank you. Yep. Um, so the top bullet on getting terrain navigation, we're, we're actually just starting with, um, so we want to, the goal is to release terrain navigation as binaries, so you could just adapt install it once we're ready. What we're doing, um, uh, what I got approved was starting with the source, um, I created a main painter um, repo for grid map geo, and that's now merged. Um, so there's a maintenance team as well as a source release on on Humble of Gridmap Geo. So um, as soon as we're ready, we're going to do a full binary release um, for Gridmap Geo, and that'll be nice because then you can have to install Gridmap Geo and just use it on Humble. Currently, we're only going to be targeting Humble for these packages uh, because we don't really have a good path forward for maintaining multiple branches with the current maintainer um, time that we have. Um, but I think that's fine because pretty much everyone's working at Humble right now in Arial. Um, and, uh, you know, we can always reevaluate later. Thank you. But, uh, yeah, so I'll be I'll be learning how to do the Bloom process for Ross too. I'm not sure if anyone here has done that yet. Um, but I think once I learn how to do it, I'll, I'll be happy to help anybody else in the working group if they want to release packages as binaries. All right, yeah, that was my going to be my question. <laughs> what is the bloom? <laughs> but uh, yes, that's uh, that's very. Um... Do you call it like this, bloom? Yeah, bloom. Bloom is the um, the release tool that you use to create binaries. Um, yeah. I haven't gotten to running that yet. There's a couple things you need to do before. Um, the wiki was a little sparse on how to do it, and they said to do these things, and they didn't explain how to do it or give any examples. Um, so I did do some wiki contributions, so it should be a little clearer on how the process works now. All right, great, thanks. Yeah, but I think like generally, like it'd be great, you know, when these packages that we're developing are working enough and stable enough that we release as binaries. I think that that's a really good way to get more adoption. Do you need any? Um, do you have maybe perhaps an an, an date of uh, when uh, you think that these uh, binaries will be released, or is it's really de completely dependent on the the maintenance team of uh, Ross for Humble? Yeah, it's up to the maintenance team when to release the binaries, but they they won't be available for general use until the next sync, which are generally about once a month cadence. Mm -hmm. So the soonest. The soonest you can expect after a release or that you know at most after you do a release is that it'll be available within a month usually um they have skipped syncs over the new year sometimes because the maintainers want to take vacation for the humble distribution mm -hmm. um and there's only one person doing that so it, it's sort of dependent on the package author uh when they feel ready that they have enough changes to spin a release um you know with a well-funded project 
you, you often see that they do a lot of releases, especially for security fixes, like they're doing a lot of patch versions. Um, but I think for a small project like Ross Serial, we might do releases every couple months kind of thing, if it's being actively developed. Awesome. All right, and then there's also the update that Drizzy gave at the beginning of the call um, and the PRs for our pilot. Do you want to mention the geoid PR for geographic lib? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so the other thing that we, because what we're trying to do in um, our pilot is use um, ROS standard messages directly from the, um, from the DDS interface. So that means that things like uh, IMU and geopositions um, should all reference the WGS84 geoid. Um, sorry, they should um, reference the ellipse rather than the geoid. Now, currently, what we do is reference the geoid or close to it because it's all all the heights are given, altitudes are all given as above sea level. Um, so some GPSs do. Um, do the undulation correction, and that is available, but it's not generally available, and it's not necessarily the same for all um, for, for for all GPSs. Uh, and certainly in simulation, there is um, there's no calculation to do that. So that's um, the way that's dealt with. Is at the moment is it's done off board, um, and that's the same as the way that Mavros does it. The problem with that is that it means that the messages being emitted by the autopilot are not ROS uh, rep consistent, and they're not consistent with the message definitions. Um, so what we've been looking at is how to add a really lightweight um, geoid altitude to ellipsoid calculation. Um, and the way we've approached that is to take the geoid library out of geographic lib, um, which does a um, rather than doing the full spherical harmonic calculation for doing the geoid, it does um, it pre-calculates them, saves it as a as, a, as effectively an image, and then does a, a various forms of cubic interpolation to do that. Um, that seems to work. Um, it's fairly light on flash. Um, I've got a version running. Um, it's all a bit messy because I've tried to keep the history of how geographic lib worked. Um, the main thing I've got to figure out is how to get the um, get the file onto SD card and then check it on some hardware. Um, so in principle, that's a way of doing it. And that means that we can then um, handle, we can standardize our messages properly. And that means that we don't have to then have an intermediate node doing um, fixing up the data coming out of the autopilot. We can use it directly. So the objective is that something like the terrain nav library can consume the, uh, the messages coming out of the flight controller without any intermediate processing. That's the that's the end state. Um, but of course, we have to fix everything up to do that. So that's that's something that's in process. Um, yeah. There isn't a PR for it at the moment. It's just a branch. So um, I can provide a link to the branch if anyone's looking. But it's a it's Sounds a, good. it's a it's a bit of a pig's ear at the moment because it's 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 in a in a very much a working state, um, uh, designed for like back testing against the original libraries as opposed to being published. I'll dig that out. Yeah, you kind of lost me there, but I'm going to look at the transcript <laughs> and uh, add this correctly to the to the slides. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks for the update, Riz and Ryan. Uh, moving on to uh, documentation. Woohoo! Well, then... um, that is uh, well. We've already had a couple of updates from from the other subcommittees. Like uh, simulation has added uh, a great overview page based on an. Um, on a paper submission, and also there are, have been a couple of nice implement, uh, uh, includes of the indoor navigation to the aerobotic landscape as well, like um, adding VAO packages or also some um, inclusions to the hardware page. So I think it's probably best for me to kind of show it to you on the screen. It's difficult to... Um... <laughs> I'm not going to make any notes uh, right now, obviously. 
So, uh, so um, for the area autonomy stacks, um, we have like the VAR packages from the last time. Um, we have also PR open that's currently being um, by by uh, Benalo. Indeed, that also kind of adds a lot more uh detail to one of these uh, autonomy packages also kind of like specifically like which platform is being used which was missing in the previous one so that's going to be really cool so both me and my young we have uh, given some comments for that so that is ongoing um and like i said before like the simulation there's now a very big uh, comparison um of it as well and also kind of like, you know, uh, also a nice overview of which vehicle types can be used for which simulator. Um, yeah, so <laughs> we mentioned Gozira, but there's a lot of simulators out there. It's not making things easier for for uh, the simulation uh, subcommittee, that's for sure. Uh, but it's uh, quite handy because some are, yeah, handier for swarms and, uh, and some are better for physics simulators. Um, another nice update to give as well, um, although it's not yet uh, completely finished, is that... Oh, Arsh, uh, perhaps you can... Uh... I just want to add something like in the simulation, uh, there is some missing pieces. If any one of you knows that, please feel free to uh, write it down and make a clear. Ah, yeah, of course, yes. Um, that is indeed this issue that you're mentioning, indeed, that uh, that we need to have some input on some of the simulators, indeed. I will share this in the chat yeah. uh, right away. Thanks for uh, reminding me. Um, where's the chat? And there you go. So if anybody has worked with uh, Drake O3D, uh, rotor pie before, um, perhaps uh, help us out to fill those uh, those information in. Uh, um, I know the OTD group. Um, maybe they. Can oh yeah, sure. Them. Like perhaps you can um, you can point them to this issue, and uh, maybe they can add uh, more to this uh, um, the, to the schematic. Um, then I would like to show you guys perhaps like an overview of kind of the GitHub pages render that I've uh, tried of the robotic landscape, because we are getting a lot of tables at this moment. And even though it's quite handy to just uh, implement things in a table directly in the GitHub pages, um, that's just very handy for contribution. The tables now are very difficult to um, to be seen. So there's actually now we're kind of like experimenting uh, with um, like at least like different Jekyll um, teams. And let's see if, uh, yeah, we can get something uh, nice out of there. But that's, uh, that's kind of like an, uh, an indication of uh, how it looks like. For instance, like the simulation one uh, looks definitely a lot better like this. But it's, uh, as you can see, this is, uh, no go right here, but at least like you're able to kind of really, uh, re really see it much better right now. So um, not necessarily very uh, suitable for sharing yet, but I can still share the link right here for anybody that's interested. Um, and perhaps we can also make a short, like at one point, uh, perhaps get an, a an, an custom URL for this. Uh, once we got something that actually looks a little bit nice in it, but it already looks pretty nice with a very minimal effort, um, as as uh, as you maybe agree. So I think that's uh, that's pretty much um, my update. Oh, thanks for uh, for taking notes. So I'll. Uh... Yep. All right. So we yep. probably want to um, expand our contributors. Uh, grow the contributors for the landscape. Um, do we want to maybe make a quick campaign online and ask for contributions directly? Um, I've seen success previously from company uh, from other projects where um, it's more like add your name to the list, send the pull request, and uh, then other companies can just add their own stuff in there instead of us having to chase it for for them. Um, would yeah, everyone yeah. like to participate in something like this? So um, what we could do is just write some, I don't know, social media copy and put it out there. 
and then just ask companies um, if you know anyone that could contribute like a company or whatnot you can just send this uh, their way and say if they can contribute back. Um, potential contributors would be like anyone that is building hardware within the aerial robotics community, um, from fly controllers to kids to whatever. And um, yeah, so if you see anyone doing that, please help us share and uh, retweet, see if we can get stuff out there, and see if maybe we can get more contributions. Um, the way the landscape is right now, I think it's a it's very good. It's has categories, it's laid out. I think it's in a good shape for others to just come in and just add their stuff in it um, and continue to expand. And um, yeah, keep it alive. I think this like this sort of project, like a landscape, it has to continue. Um, it's not like we're gonna call it done one day and say and and it landscape is not going to grow anymore so it's going to be a oh, continuously it's never done. <laughs> moving project and it's never going to be done so um, mm. yeah i would rather want to see a little less let's say like you know there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of packets out there it would be nice to at one point start merging things together but let's see how <laughs> it evolves right <laughs> we're just here yeah. to observe that's all continuously expanding a project <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's not going right. to be uh, easier in it all right. All right. So let let's just uh, focus a little bit more on uh, next plans and uh, if there's any PRs, anything that we should be focusing on. Um, is there anything uh, on the subcommittees? Um, do you need any help on focusing goals or maybe defining a next step? Are you having trouble um, aligning in any type of way with your committee peers? Uh, let us know. Um, I'm not going to put too much pressure into defining what what is next for you. But if there's any uh, need for help, please reach out to Kim and I on Discord. Um, yeah, go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, I actually would like to put out a call to help for a grid map. Um, I'm currently maintaining that library. And we can't get the iron build stable. Um, I don't know why I've spent many hours in CMake trying to get it fixed. But if anyone knows CMake and is able to help me, um, currently those I can't release binaries because of this bug. Um, and we would really like to release new binaries because then we we can't release grid map geo binaries until grid map releases binaries. And I just I spent enough time on this. Um, so if, if anyone has good good CMake knowledge and is able to uh, to help me out, that would be much appreciated. Yeah, I'm not an expert, but I can take a look at it. Yeah, I'll, let me share the issue right now. Um, and uh, yeah, if anyone has time, I would really be much appreciated. Yeah, maybe just a different set of eyes can help you get unblocked. Yeah. But this is for specifically for Iron, the Iron release. Well, so the weird thing is that like our local GitHub's actions passes, but then the Bloom or the uh, the build server fails, um, even though they should be the same. So um, I was able to reproduce it locally on Iron, but not on Humble. Um, but the issue is present on both. So there's differences between the versions, and sometimes it works in Docker. You can reproduce it, and sometimes you can't. I I honestly. It's it's pretty co confusing on when what causes it to show up, and I think if I understood that, then I'd know what the problem is. But yeah, <laughs> it's it's a mess, um, and I'm not sure what what caused it, but you know, it, it is what it mm -hmm. is. Yeah, I might uh, like I haven't done anything on that, but uh, like uh, for my uh, collaborator that is uh, from Crisis Form Two, there he was working on a on a mocap uh, motion capture package uh, package for Ross, and I, it sounds like he had exactly the same problem with Iron. So let me ask him and see if he found the issue eventually, because he had like pro issues with the Iron uh, the iron build, but not not the humble build for some reason. I'll, um, I'll try to uh, get info from him then for you. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Rick. Um Yeah, uh, Ryan and Kim, are there problems in um, rolling as well? Or is it just um, design? You not not rolling rolling builds fine. Um, really, I had a suspicion. Yeah, I had a suspicion it might be that the images we're using for our CI are using newer versions and that before the sync and then after the sync is not updated, um, and that's what the build farm runs is 
against packages that have already been synced. Um, but it's a little bit hard to understand the the infrastructure, and, and I haven't gotten quite clear answers from the uh, from the ROS maintainers because different people maintain the Debian package infrastructure than maintain the Docker images. And there's also like six different kinds of Docker images you can use for CI for development uh, for different purposes. And uh, it seems like the ROS community just sort of uses whatever they find first for a Docker. Oh, okay. Um, thanks. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it seems like a nasty CMake issue. So, All right. Mm, yeah, I'm reading through it. Yeah. It sounds awful. All right. See if I can help. I'll see if I can help. Yeah. Let's share it on Discord uh, as well. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, let's move on to the end of the call discussion. So. This is more of an open-ended um, aspect to the call. Um, is there anything, Kim, that we should be focusing in particular? There were a couple of um, uh, topics that people have um, uh, said that they would like to perhaps discuss or perhaps like put to to vote or something like that. So, like the um, the indoor. Uh, indoor navigation committee were kind of like they were hoping to see like if we can kind of um, agree on a common uh, environment setup and then i also took the one from the simulation uh, question it's like should we for for now focus on one particular simulation um perhaps that is something that we can uh, discuss about uh, maybe i know something on this point So, uh, I think simulation is uh, like goes on hand on hand with uh, indoor and outdoor navigation. If I if I'm not wrong, uh, so maybe we all can share one Docker, uh, one maybe dev container or Docker environment where we can work, and uh, so like we don't have dependency issues from one PC to other, another PC, and like we can work flexibly on the either on the Windows or on the other other Linux version. Yeah, so are you, um, Docker and simulation really doesn't work on Mac OS and or in VMs. Um, like uh, it's you, you can if if you're similar if you're some the server maybe, um, but running graphics unless you're using um, machines with NVIDIA cards, um, you're not going to get good results, especially with the new gazebo, which has quite demanding rendering requirements. So. There's there's a lot of discussion online about whether people can get Gazebo Garden with Ogre 2 running on a VM, and the answer is no. Um, WSL probably yes, um, Ubuntu yes, but uh, other platforms no. Um, so it, 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 Docker could be one way of doing it, but I wouldn't want to use Docker to the exclusion of everything else as well. I think because that would cut some development environments out. Yeah, I only worked uh, on Ubuntu and the Windows, not on the Mac OS, so I have no experience on that side. Yeah, yeah. So I think you need to be able to support. I mean, a Docker container would be nice, um, but it, you, you kind of want it to bundle up something which is just like a, as a convenience. Um, and there, there are there are issues with running GUIs from Docker, so there's quite serious security issues depending on how you run it as well. Um, so that may may or may not be an issue for people, but it's just something to be aware of. Yeah, and then just to add to that, there's a reason there's a hundreds of well, dozens of Docker images out there. Um, it's hard to standardize a uh, set of images that can help everyone. Um, but having um, ha the, taking a step back, the abstract idea of having a standard environment for testing certain things um, would be very useful as in um, a simulation environment. And so there are lots of simulators, but 
um, a, a lot of the you know, a, a, a significant portion of the community that are engaged in this discussion do use gazebo and perhaps some other things. So, um, and gazebo has traditionally been used to test a lot of the ROS infrastructure, especially the indoor nav stack. So, perhaps we could propose providing a simulation environment for testing indoor navigation, similar to what the kind of OSRF did with the sub T challenge. So they created a world as part of a competition. So maybe something like that, um, not necessarily a competition world, but the infrastructure that the competitions um, provide would be useful for some of the other streams. And um, what might be different though, is that the competitions tend to build the infrastructure for the specific competition and then the, the, those projects aren't supported. So if you wanted to use the sub T environment now, you, you probably would have trouble to put it together because I don't think anyone's actively maintaining it. What we want is a set of standard environments um, that are maintained um, and are available to at least the other working groups that are involved. Um, now it could be Gazebo, it could be something else if like it's WeBots or whatever it happens to be. Um, but we, and, and it might be one or two environments. So you might say, I, I'd like to have a hospital or something like that, or I might like to have a cave or, so what What actually environment that do the do the other streams want to, to have? Um, and then what would be involved in putting it together? What features does it need to have? Um, what simulator do we use? So if we could narrow down on that, that would certainly help um, give some focus to the simulation stream because you can see how, how much, you know, th there's a huge number of simulators. So um, if you wander around looking for problems, you'll, you, you'll find no end of them. Um, but with a small number of contributors, what we need to do is to, tackle a, a sort of a small finite number of problems um, and then build out from that. So uh, a request from one of the other streams to provide an environment might be a good way to get that going. Yeah, I agree. There's a need for different environments right now. There's nothing. Um, I mean, getting a team set up uh, with a proper environment takes time. And um, yeah. We all start by looking at what's out there and like the spend a lot of cycles and finding nothing and having to put together something based on what it's already out there and just you seem like you're picking things from different projects and uh, building your own. Um, one thing which could help Reese is I think you shared a project with Ardu Pilot, which already did some slam or VIO in an indoor setting. Um, like I think you shared it in your previous presentation. Um, yes. So that that was that done could... by sorry yeah, that that was done by um, Ryan's GSOC student last year. Um, so exactly, and um, that could be it's quite simple, point. but it's something like that. But perhaps um, a, a bit more with a bit more detail or. Yeah, but th th there are I mean, examples. I there. feel like they, they, they could be multiple worlds, and the one which was used there could be a good enough starting point. I think maybe in the scope of that GSOC project, they didn't get time to maybe try out a lot of the other pro projects or packages out there which are there. But from the indoor navigation standpoint, what I was thinking of doing is that we just mess around with all these packages that we see which are lying around for us to humble and see how well they work for VIO Slam and things like that and get a sense of um, how mature they are so that we can take maybe one of the ones where we can see a juicy problem to solve or maybe something a bit more polished which we can like get to the past the finish line or something like that and we do that assessment by once let's say bonolo's analysis is ready we sift through all of that look at what's already there in ross 2 and then we just kind of try it out in simulation in that one world that you have so that kind of becomes a nice testing ground for indoor to you know try out multiple packages with a certain intent it will probably even tie us down or maybe it's a good thing to start with a class of uh, like an aerial vehicle as well so maybe we start with what was done in the gsoc project and then with the same like copter configuration or whatever try things out and then go from there instead of complicating things with you know all the fancy crafts you showed for outdoors um but yeah, I feel that is the overall uh, approach I was thinking of. And to go a step back to the Docker versus um, 
native installation part, I feel we could still potentially have a recommended settings kind of thing where like let's say if we have a dev container which works on top of ubuntu plus an nvidia graphics card even though it is kind of binding and not really helping out people who are running with wsl or let's say mac os it might just be what most people start off with anyway because as far as i'm aware most people doing ros most people doing ros dev uh, are usually in ubuntu but like the simple problems i'm facing is that it's just become too cumbersome to try to do any dev with you know Ubuntu 20 and trying out humble from source and like building things like that. So just kind of recommending, hey, the easy way to contribute to this project is get Ubuntu 22, only stick to humble. Don't worry about ROS1 for now and let's kind of try out what's new so that we're looking forward and not backwards because it's a new project. Let's just do something which works for a longer duration, things like that. Thank you. Uh, can I add something to that as well, perhaps? Um, I Go don't ahead. know, like, uh, like I'm for simulation, like I've, uh, the gazebo has been a, a little while ago, but from Webot today, at least they had a nice functionality when they say that's what they supported for WSL, um, that you were able to run ROS then from WSL, but you were able to run the we built for instance from windows itself because that had direct control to the graphics um controller and they, i'm not sure like you know i think they do use some kind of like a tcp connection between those so it might be like at least like coming back to like the docker uh, discussion that we had before perhaps for the ros environment there can be a docker thing but perhaps we can see if for Gazebo it's possible to kind of like link the two that Gazebo still runs natively, but ROS runs yeah. from uh, the computer itself. But it's um, it's just like a thought that I had that's like, you know, wondering if something like that would be possible for Gazebo. I think that makes sense. I think that does make a lot of Kim, yes, you can do that. There is a feature called Relay in Gazebo um, that you can use. So you can. Um, so, so there is a there is there, there is a method to run a GUI on a different machine even um, to uh, running the um, running the server side of it. So yeah. Okay, that is uh, good to know. That would be good to uh, look yeah. at then. It's a bit involved to set up, um, but but it can be done. Um, so right. that that might be that might be one approach as well. Good suggestion. Yeah, one last comment here is um, do we want to support uh, multiple operating systems uh, or do we want to go the RSRF route and only say Ubuntu? Well, technically, they say uh, OCRF says um, Windows and Ubuntu and Mac OS as well, but reality <laughs> um, makes it a bit difficult. I think it's the training wheels attached or like kind of you know what we recommend or what we guarantee kind of thing where we know ubuntu just works uh if you have the experience the expertise the patience and the knowledge then if things break in mac os because brew did something weird or it breaks in windows it's on you i think that's kind of the de facto way things yeah. are right we should say ubuntu is stable this way and there's many options to do it and windows and then also mac os but caveat this is the warnings from the community exactly like the warranty wired sticker basically um we are running out of time we only have five more minutes um do we want to wrap up the discussion and uh, move on to the last slide and uh, announcements for the next meeting so what was our final decision regarding the indoor uh, simulation environment? Um, are we going to use the one that was in last week's presentation? So there you mean uh, the new gazebo, right? Like uh, gazebo ignition, yeah. aka new gazebo, aka. <laughs> yes, I think I think that's that's kind of like the standard. And also I would like to add 
Um, I remember that we had a discussion meeting a very long time ago. Uh, well, very long time, like about a, about a small year ago, where I actually made out a poll of what everybody was using, and predominantly everybody was using Gazebo. Um, and since okay. Gazebo Classic is going to disappear, it doesn't make any sense to focus on that. So that's and 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 we'll be using um, the world that we have access to, basically. The the easiest world that we can find. Yeah, I think that's a good starting point, Um Maybe once we're working on specific problems or for specific use cases, it makes sense to either request simulation team or aid them and maybe creating a world for that specific use case, but at least for like a generic world with some walls and some challenges, I think what what he showed on from GSOP project looked quite nice. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Do they still have the um, the old Willow Garage um, environments? That was at least like that was a standard on uh, Gazebo Classic. I'm not sure if they have it already for the new Gazebo. Yeah, um, that that when I mentioned that about getting a standard environment, I probably should. Have said that. That's what I meant. A, a, a set of worlds, so um, a, a set of example worlds that can be used for a, a particular test case simulation so for example for indoor simulation you might want the inside of a hospital or a house or like something like that or or a simple maze um or just some blocks on a plane um so something like terrain navigation um we're going to need something with terrain in it so we're going to need a terrain map um and maybe an environment that we can agree on that we can load up with corresponding settings for 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 the the the, the simulations running it um so that that's what would be a good guide to come out of the various other working groups is saying you know i'd like to test indoor navigation i'd like a selection of three worlds they would contain these things could you set that up please and then maintain it so that that would be that would be kind of a good steer for the simulation working group um and it would provide a set of standardized working environments for the other other groups to test against. Um, quick question, Rhys. Uh, I don't know if this is already there as a part of the uh, wiki for, for Gazebo, like Ignition or whatever, but um, with these graphics intensive simulators, like minimum system requirements, do they vary a lot with the kind of worlds that we're doing or the nature of the simulation? And if so, do you think it makes sense to kind of spec out or at least mention what you guys tested on so that this, people have some reference or some semblance of understanding that, hey, okay, they've tested this out with 16 gigs of RAM on this sort of a processor with this particular NVIDIA graphics card. So even though we can't maybe directly recommend some minimum spec we at least have a documentation of the tested spec so that people running on diverse hardware including pcs and laptops or whatever they have an understanding of what to expect beyond just the os because i think that will become a big factor with people testing stuff on their own machines um yeah, with varying yes. system configurations Yes, I, I I think that's very valid. Um, that that did come up actually as part of the um, trying to migrate the TurtleBot simulation for the Nav2 stack. Um, and kind of ran into issues about um, the demands of running the Nav stack plus the renderer plus everything else. Um, exactly. Yeah, I, I I mean, Gazebo's full singing all dancing graphics. Um, does require or can require fairly demanding um processes and and, and a gpu um not as much as say isaac um which i think yeah. requires a, a vast pleasing. amount um but you can dial it back so you could provide a range of environments um so so you can, can gazebo is really configurable so you can set up, i'm sure the other simulators are as well um so i yeah i think that's good and and maybe targeting worlds that are less intensive or less graphics intensive um, or kind of quick testing and things and getting up and running and then something more demanding for those other other requirements. So people doing computer vision and things like that are going to want more graphical demanding setup. So um, yeah, good, good, good idea. I, I, incidentally, there's one of the reasons that I run stuff on Mac OS and you can kind of see it, um, it, it flies on the, the new chips. 
so running things like full navigation stack plus full rendering plus an autopilot is very feasible on a on a on an m1 or m2 laptop um and so in the community, I've seen quite a lot of requests for people who've got these machines wanting to run stuff on them. But it's tier three support. So and we, we can help them. It does work. Um, and, and certainly the a laptop is a specced up enough machine to run pretty much any of the simulations that I've been using. Um, but it, it takes a lot of work to get it running. Um, so, yeah, we, we're going to need to either help people set that up or scale back the worlds so that they can run them on uh, less demanding and or less specced up machines. Um, perhaps something we could document as well. I guess this uh, sounds like good topics that can be um, further discussed on the Discord. That at least we can uh, all converge to the to some of the same things. So there's a lot of options there, but let's uh, let's do that. But uh, I put question marks there. Uh, Ramon. Um, I'll leave it to you. Are you still there? Jim, yes, I'm here. Sorry, awesome. I was muted. All right, want to move on with the discussion um, and then thank everyone for their participation today. We had a great meeting. I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to have enough to cover the whole hour, but it sounds like we did. <laughs> All right, so on our very next meeting, uh, Wednesday, 23rd of April, 24, Oh, 24th, 24th. 24th of April of 24th. Uh, Jayon Lim uh, is going to be discussing uh, terrain navigation. And uh, that's going to be a great meeting. I'm looking forward to that. Um, and if there's anything else that we can help you with, please let us know. Again, if you can contribute to the landscape, please just click, 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 send the PR uh, and help us add things to the list. And uh, if there's anything else that we should be discussing, let's connect in Discord and let's keep the conversation going. Please don't wait until the next meeting to bring your update. Um, if you can give an up a weekly update, that would be terrific. So everyone can keep uh, just aware of the progress of what's going happening. And maybe if there's anything we can do, some synergies we can create and continuously develop things. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, how did I do? Hopefully good. Kim, thank you for your help. Uh, thank you for meeting minutes. Thank you, everyone. And I'll talk to you in the next meeting. Talk to you soon. Goodbye. Bye. Ending the recording.